In this video, I'm going to take a look at how you go about finding your increasing and decreasing intervals on a given function, as well as how you would apply the first derivative test, which then would result in you being able to find your maximum min points. All right, this would be one of the early skills um, that you would learn how to do right before you go into curve sketching and calculus. All right, now before we get to actually working out a problem, we're going to take a look at a couple theorems that gives you um, the knowledge you need to be able to then algebra work out the function and find these things. All right, over here on the left I have a theorem. All right, let f be a function that is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. All right, that's pretty much standard. You've got to always check, look at that original function and see if it's continuous on the closed and differentiable on the open. All right, and if you do have a function that fits that scenario, then if the derivative is greater than zero, then we know the original function is increasing. Okay. If the derivative is equal to zero, then f is going to be constant. And if the derivative is less than zero, then f is decreasing. All right, this is definitely something that you would need to memorize when the derivative is greater than zero, the original function is increasing. So by being able to calculate that derivative and look at it, then that tells us what our original function is doing without us actually having to graph it and look at it along those lines. All right, we do have then a first derivative test as well. All right, a relative minimum occurs at C when the derivative changes from negative to positive, all right, which that makes sense, all right, when the derivative is changing from negative to positive. So if the negative to positive, then you're going to have that original function will be a minimum. A relative maximum occurs at C when the derivative changes from positive to negative, all right, so when it changes from positive to negative, when that derivative changes from positive to negative, you got a max. And then when the derivative does not change at C, okay, because that will occur, you know, maybe it stays negative and negative, then you don't have a, a relative minimum or a re relative maximum. All right, if it goes from positive to positive, there's no change. If it goes from negative to negative, there's no change. All right, so um, that's some background information, things that you're, you're going to want to memorize. <clears throat> you're definitely going to want to memorize, you know, when the derivative is greater than zero, your function is increasing. When it's less than zero, it's decreasing. Okay, and then your first derivative test as well. Now, let's put those two theorems into practice. All right, working out a problem, seeing how this is all going to look and how you can organize your work so that it'll actually make sense. Okay, let's suppose that it says find the increasing and decreasing intervals and any maximum min points that you might have on the function. And we are assuming that you do not have a calculator. You're not just going to put this in a graphing calculator and look at it. You're actually going to use some calculus to do this. All right, so if my original function is x squared minus 4 raised to the 2 thirds power. Okay, so basically this is a cube root function. Okay, so cube root functions for the most part are going to be uh, smooth and continuous everywhere. And so it's going to be differentiable everywhere. So we definitely are continuous on our closed interval, all right, which would be the entire function, and then differentiable on the entire function as well. Okay, so the uh, first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to find my critical points. All right, to find my critical points, I'm going to have to take the derivative and set it equal to zero and solve. Okay, so let's kind of write down what I'm doing step by step here. So I'm going to find the critical numbers. Okay, I'm going to find my critical numbers. All right, and I'm going to do that by taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, and solving. Okay, so let's calculate the derivative of this real quick here, f prime of x. All right, looks like I got a little power rule here with a chain because my inside function there is x squared minus 4. So doing power rule on the outside, I'm going to have a 2 thirds, leave the inside of the function alone, x squared minus 4, subtract 1 here, so 2 thirds minus 3 over 3 is going to give me a negative 1 third. All right, times my chain, so times the derivative of that inside function, and that's just going to be a 2x. All right, now let's go ahead and clean this derivative up a little bit because with that negative exponent, that's going to put that in the bottom. 2 times 2 is going to give me a 4x on top. So I'm going to have a 4x on top. I'm going to have 3 and then the cube root of an x squared minus 4. Okay, so that right there is my first derivative. Okay, so let's actually relabel that f prime of x. And let's even box it in so that we 
know what that derivative is. Okay, now I need to set this derivative equal to zero to solve. When I set this equal to zero to solve, basically what I'm going to need to do is set that top to zero, set that bottom equal to zero. So I'm going to do 4x equals zero, which is going to give me x equals zero. I'm going to set that bottom equal to zero. So 3 times the cube root of x squared minus 4 equals 0. If I divide both sides by 3, that gets rid of that. So cube root of x squared minus 4 equals 0. Now I need to um, keep, uh, raise both sides to the third power to get rid of that cube root. So then I'm going to be down to an x squared minus 4 equals 0 x squared equals positive 4, so x equals plus or minus 2. Alright, so my critical numbers, let's identify them here. Critical numbers are going to be x equals 0 and x equals plus or minus 2. Alright, they're all defined, they're all in the function, that function was continuous everywhere, so we're good. So now I have found those critical numbers. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize all of this increasing, decreasing, max mins on a number line. So I'm going to take these critical numbers and I'm going to put them on a really long number line. Okay, so let's draw a really long number line here. Just so we've got room to write, I think. Okay, so I'm going to put, I got three numbers I got to get on here, so let's do negative two, zero, two. All right, now above there, I'm going to write my intervals. So this is the interval from negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. This interval is from negative 2 to 0. This interval is from 0 to 2. And this interval is from 2 to infinity. Okay, now what I need to start doing, if I'm going to apply that first theorem, I need to take a look at what my derivative is doing in each one of these intervals. So then I'm going to label f prime of x so that I know what I'm looking at. Okay, now this is my derivative, so that's what I'm going to be functioning on. Now, all I need to know in that first theorem, all I needed to know was whether the derivative was positive, negative, or zero. So I didn't need the exact value, so I don't need a calculator to do this. In this interval, I'm going to pick some negative number. I know, I could do negative 3, I could do negative 4, I could do negative 5, it really doesn't make any difference, okay? So if I pick a negative 5, if I plug a negative 5 into that top, it's going to give me a negative in that uh, numerator. If I plug a negative 5 in here, all right, negative 5 squared would be 25 minus 4. This is going to be a positive number on the bottom times a positive 3. So I have a negative divided by a positive, which means that my overall derivative in this interval is going to be negative. And that's all the closer I have to do. So you can really seriously do this without a calculator. All right, now in this interval, I'm going to pick the number in the middle. I'm going to go with a negative 1. Okay, so if I plug a negative 1 in here, well, I still have um, negative in the top. Okay, now if I plug a negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared is going to be 1. 1 minus 4 is going to give me a negative 3. Cube root of a negative number, I can do that, but it's going to be negative. Okay, so a negative divided by a negative makes this interval positive. All right, and then we can do that again. If I plug in a positive 1, this is positive. Oh, but the bottom is going to be negative, so positive divided by negative makes this interval negative. All right, and if I pick a really big positive number, the top's going to be positive. Really big positive number here will make the bottom positive, so um, positive divided by positive. So I'm going to be positive. All right, now, now I know exactly what my derivative is doing in each one of these intervals. Okay, so now from that first theorem, I can determine what my original function is doing. Okay, now let's go back and look at this. If the derivative is positive, it's increasing. If the derivative is negative, it's decreasing. The original function is decreasing. Okay, so that means right here, my derivative is negative. So my original function is decreasing. My derivative is positive, so my original function is increasing. My derivative is negative, so my function is decreasing. And then my derivative is positive, so my original function is increasing. So without looking at a picture of that, without looking at that, I can know exactly that this original function, when being graphed, is decreasing between negative infinity and, and negative 2. It's increasing between negative 2 and 0. It's decreasing again between 0 and 2. 
and it's increasing again from 2 to infinity. So I can, it's describing what I am seeing. Okay, um, so now using the first derivative test, okay, when my derivative goes from negative to positive, okay, from negative to positive, all right, what do I have? I have a minimum, all right, because the function is decreasing and then increasing. That derivative is going from negative to positive, all right, so then that tells me right here, then I have to have a minimum, okay, so I have a minimum at negative 2. All right, now I need to take negative 2 and plug it in. If I want the ordered pair, the actual ordered pair that that minimum is coming from, I need to plug it into the original function because this is talking about what the original function is doing. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So at negative 2, 0, I have a minimum. Okay, now if I keep coming along here, when my According to the first derivative test, when my first derivative goes from positive to negative, I have a max, all right, which makes sense because if my original function is increasing and then all of a sudden decreasing, I have to have a maximum point right there. So that means I have a max at zero, and then I need to plug this in here, all right, this would be zero minus four, all right, so that'd be uh, cube root of negative 4 squared. Negative 4 squared is 16. So cube root is 16 right there. Doing it in the head there. A little struggle. Okay, cube root is 16. Alright, now, first derivative test. When that first derivative, when the derivative goes from negative to positive, my original function is decreasing and then increasing, so then I have to have another minimum. So then I have another minimum at, all right, and then this one would be at 2, plug 2 back in. I'm still going to have the exact same thing here. 4 minus 4 is going to be 0, and then cube root of 0 squared is going to be 0. All right, so now I've identified my maxes and mins. Okay, so let's uh, do a little bit of summary. Um, you wouldn't want to leave just your increasing and decreasing intervals in this chart. Okay, I could, let's go ahead and box in this because I did find each one of the max and min points. All right, and it did come from the chart, but I was able to write them out separately. And then let's do our increasing decreasing intervals using interval notation. So it is increasing on the intervals from negative 2 to 0 and 2 to infinity and it's decreasing on these two intervals so negative infinity to negative 2 and 0 to 2 so you can summarize your increasing and decreasing on as like that all right so um Nice little breakdown of how you go about using the theorem and the first derivative test to find your increasing and decreasing intervals as well as your max and min points. Um, a chart like this is very, very handy. Just lets you keep everything straight. You just want to remember that this chart alone is not sufficient for the AP test. Okay, you can't just draw the chart and then leave it like that. You've got to do some type of summary to summarize what you found from that chart. Okay, obviously, they're going to expect you to probably draw that chart, but you just want to make sure and pull the information out of the chart as well as you can. Okay, main thing, you find your critical points. To find critical points, you take the derivative of that original function, send equal to zero, and find those critical points. Those critical points then are what goes on that number line so that you know how, what intervals of that function you're looking at. Okay, um, definitely thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.